Hey, Milwaukee, welcome and thank you for joining us for another installment of Listen MKE, a partnership between WUWM, Milwaukee's NPR, the Ideas Lab at the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Milwaukee PBS, and the Milwaukee Public Library. My name is Taryn Powell and I'm the race and ethnicity reporter at WUWM. This time last year, the arrival of COVID-19 appended every aspect of life as we knew it. There was so much we didn't know at the time about the virus and how it spread, but as the number of positive cases and deaths kept rising nationally and locally, many municipalities, many businesses made the tough decision to shut down operations completely or put a number of restrictions in place that could at least keep folks as safe as possible and keep doors open. Keep in mind a lot of places were shut down though, if not deemed essential. But what did that look like for minority owned businesses here in Milwaukee? Even before COVID-19, minority-owned businesses were more likely to fail than others. Today, I'm joined by members of Milwaukee's Black-owned business community who can talk about what their business operations have looked like in the middle of a global pandemic. Welcome Alyssa Neff, owner and creative director of The Space MKE, Gollin Smith, owner of G's Clippers, and Clifton Phelps, vice president of business development of JCP Construction. Thank you all for being here today. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. So I know a lot of us would probably want to forget that 2020 ever happened, but I'd like to start by having each of you talk briefly about where you all were before COVID hit. How was business going? What was your plan for 2020? Alyssa, I'll have you take that question first, um, then Garland and Cliff. So yeah, at the height of 2020, um, I had just entered into, what was it, like my six month mark of being uh, the owner of the Space MKE. And so we were just starting to plateau as far as like um, income to loss ratio. We were pretty much even keeven. And um, I was looking to increase our profit and our sales for that entire year um, by throwing different community events, um, and just having a bunch of different like community engagement events, uh, which would include vendors and everything like that. Um, but by March of 2020, that literally halted completely. Um, I was not deemed essential since I'm a creative studio. So we had to shut down for like three months, I believe. Um, and then after that, I literally shifted the business model completely from being essentially an art gallery um, and community like event venue space to uh, being a pho photography studio, which I rented out um, to groups of four people and under. G, can you? All right. Um, prior to COVID, um, you know, barbershop was, um, you know, as as usual, you know, congregations of, you know, uh, large groups in a barbershop at a time, especially on Fridays and Saturdays. Um, great, you know, shop conversations. Um, had a lot of uh, plans uh, for 2020. One being G's Clippers celebrating our 25 years in business, which I had so much planned for for a whole week, and um, um, also my 50th birthday was uh, last year as well. <laughs> but uh, and also as far as G's Clippers, I had planned to start rebranding uh, G's as well um, in terms of just this trying to get more on a national. Uh, levels. So I had uh, uh, developed some great relationships nationally. And uh, so all of that was, you know, um, uh, uh, cut short or, uh, or non-existence, if you, uh, if, if you will. And um, for, with COVID coming, we were shut down for about two and a half months, which was devastating to many. You know, definitely all of my barbers I have a fairly large barbershop with uh, 30 barbers and uh, stylists and and uh, a few didn't even come back after uh, COVID. Um, like I said, we were shut down for two and a half months and uh, with preparation of reopening, I had to really make sure I had deep cleaning, uh, disinfecting, uh, uh, had companies come in and do some professional cleaning and all. And then we had to implement, um, of course, uh, the six feet uh, uh, between uh, stylists and barbers and, um, it was just, it was, it was, it was altogether different. You know, uh, barbershops was not the barbershop of, of old where you had a lot of shop conversations and congregating. 
We had to um, uh, operate with uh, appointment only, no walk-ins at all. So it definitely changed that whole landscape, uh, how the barbershop looked. But, I mean, thank God, you know, we made it through. I know of a few barbershop owners and salon owners that that didn't, you know, uh, but uh, we made it through. Cliff, take it home. <laughs> take it home. Um, I think just, I don't think there's any difference in our stories. Um, last year, we were just awarded the, um, the DNC uh, general contracting contract. So, I mean, that was for us, that was going to be a tall task. Uh, we were scheduled to have close to 80 people working full time um, around the clock trying to convert the um, arena. Um, and um, I mean, just from a year ago, just from looking at my time hop, we were in Arizona at a golf tournament um, and congregating. And I'll never forget that from the start of hole one all the way to 19, where they closed the golf course, the NCAA had got that alert that NCAA was not going to have fans. And by the end of the day, everything was just canceled. Um, and people were in panic and we were trying to figure out how to uh, get back from Arizona. Why we had to drive a truck back. I mean, it was just, it's just crazy how, and even the week before that, we were at the Bucks game. I think we were playing Indiana. Um, and it just seemed like everything was just so going to be so great for 2020. Um, and then it slowly just kind of ticked down and it gave us time to kind of come to the office. You know, um, everyone worked virtual. We came in because this is, you know, this is something that this is our office. So we just came in, uh, the owners, and we just had to walk through month by month of what the next month was going to look like, assess the jobs that were still out there. Uh, we had deemed the DMC dead, uh, especially after a, a month being in pandemic. And we had to strategically plan how we were going to crawl ourselves out of um, um, 2020. So. Yeah, I think, you know, you all bring up uh, good points. It, 2020, people had so many expectations for themselves. And um, hearing that, you know, G and Alyssa, you guys experienced the shutdowns, you know. Um, Cliff, I would like to take it back to you when you guys had the big DNC contract. Um, and you're talking about the plans you had to make month by month. How did you adapt to keep things going? So... What we what we sat down and when we spread when we put out all of the contracts that we had for the year, we were getting counsel or canceled. A lot of those contracts were small um, or smaller community based projects where either the church or the nonprofit decided to hold off until the end of the pandemic. So we had to look at what was strategically still going on in Milwaukee or still going on. Um, so we looked towards uh, finishing up our healthcare projects, which were strong. Uh, but we actually had to go out and partner with a lot of other larger general contractors, which actually opened up a lot of other open opportunities for us. Um, so we are a hybrid. We're a general contractor, but we also perform. Um, so that strategic plan to reach out to different people um, of uh, different larger general contractors across the state and even in the Midwest to look at projects and see what they had and see what we could sell perform is a model that we're actually still using to this day. Only because it gives us that flexibility that we won't ever depend on an owner or a project to fail for us not to have that work coming in to keep our guys working. And so we were once we kind of leveled and found those projects that were still out there, um, once we got deemed essential workers, um, I think we were able to kind of uh, keep our staff and keep the workers out in the field moving. But we had to be very strategic and, you know, sometimes swallow some humble pie, you know, um, and, you know, that was the tough part about it. You know, people that you haven't worked with in years because the project didn't go well, you have to reach out and say, hey, what do you guys got going on? Let us take a look at some plans. Um, and, you know, sometimes we have to reach out to people that we know we never do business with and say, hey, let's grab a virtual coffee. Um, but uh, I think that for the long run for our company, we looked at that as more of a strategic plan instead of, which we never would have looked at before because we had a lot of projects, you know, on the floor that still didn't get funded or still didn't move forward. So. You know, a lot of folks like to talk about getting back to normal as we get a better handle on the virus. What does normal look like for you as, as far as your business goes? Uh, G, take that question. Well, normal, um, you know, the barbershop, you know, it's nothing like, uh, you know, the conversations uh, that's had in the barbershop. Uh, 
can't wait to that that uh, that comes and uh, comes back and uh, that's just the congregation also of, of of guys you know talking about sports you know it's just it's cool you know having a one on one conversation with your client but it's nothing like you know where we you know the voices get elevated the passion you know uh, 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 comes into play and I mean I can't wait till till that gets back and also what I uh, negated to mention. Uh, prior to shutdown, uh, literally um, a month before we shut down, I opened uh, G's MKE Wellness Clinic, which uh, I'm in right now. Um, and we had to shut that down, you know, with, with COVID. And I can't wait until we get back to being able to service the community like we had did prior to the shutdown. Um, but yeah, you know, it's nothing like, you know, the barbershop. And for the, and for the most part, you know, a lot of guys, this is their you know, their country club, if you will, you know, this is their, their time to let, 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 let all their hair down and see uh, what feedback they can get from the, uh, um, the, uh, uh, the dissection of the, uh, uh, you know, announcers on ESPN that they might be listening to and they, you know, draw their own conclusion and come to the barbershop and try to see what they can uh, 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 see how many guys they can, uh, get excited, you know, so I miss that, man. I really, I really do miss the, uh, the whole barbershop atmosphere, but I mean, we're, we're, we're coming back slowly, but surely, but, uh, uh, we still seem like it's a little bit of ways from, uh, normal. Yeah. And, and I'm sure uh, your clients are ready to get back in there too. Um, oh, yeah. just, just because of like what you said, that barbershop being, it's like a, a therapy session. You get to yeah, meet yeah. up with everybody, you know, get things off your chest, have those fun conversations. So I know they're ready to be back too. <laughs> Alyssa, what, what would normal look like for you? Um, so normal for me would look pretty similarly uh, in the creative community, literally community conversation um, and being able to like be physically in the location with the artists that you're looking to work with is so crucial, um, so crucial to the skill. And so for for what normal would look like that would literally look like us being able to collaborate um in an enclosed environment again you know like i'm looking forward to the summer happening because luckily there are a lot more outdoors projects we can work on together um but for us uh normal would would because of where we are located too with Milwaukee, Wisconsin and the, the weather, you know, like literally it's snowing right now. Um, and so that means that we're confined to indoor spaces like anywhere from, you know, eight to seven months out of the year. And so um, normal for us would literally look like uh, some sort of regulation where we're able to um, heighten the capacity of what we could um, engage with in the communities um, and that's that's what normal would look like for us. And Cliff, I, I'd like to ask you that as well. What would normal be like uh, in your in your business? I don't know. I don't think I don't think anyone's ever going to be back to normal. Uh, you know, I was just watching TV yesterday, and I saw two people like right in each other's space, and I'm like, what are they doing? You know, uh, I I think that we are forever going to have this uh, um, this instinct. Um, not to repeat what happened again, right? Um, just as a people, um, for business-wise, what would normal look like? I guess normal will look like, um, you know, just in our different sectors, you know, uh, you know, healthcare kicking back up, um, cranes in the sky. Uh, uh, I mean, personally, a pack bucks game. Um, but those are things that um probably won't happen if they happen they'll happen with with um caution so i don't i don't think that we'll ever get back to 100 percent normal especially mentally um, but i think what we can do is start to um tr start to try to figure out how we can drive our profits back to where they need to be safely um and i think that's the key word is uh definitely safely and gee i feel you on that on the barbershop like you know everyone's taking such caution right now you know right. comes out and it ain't, it ain't that time. No one's gonna get out for like an extra hour and debate on, you know, the MVP or you know what the Bucks are doing, and yeah, and that absolutely sucks at that wellness center. That just I, I just thought about it. It was like, yeah, it wasn't out a month before COVID hit, and it was a great thing for the community. Right. So, right. And that one month, man, that one month, we had an, an unbelievable amount of guys coming. It really let us know how uh, these guys really do want to know their health status. They want to know yeah. their health status, man. But 
It's just something about taking that trip to the doctor, man, and just the unknown and, you know, not having that close relationship with their uh, doctor like they do their barbers. So, so yeah, I mean, so I, I know a lot of guys are excited and, 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 and um, you know, just waiting for this uh, clinic to uh, be full, uh, full swing again, which actually we just started being open on, on the weekends now. So, yeah. Good. Cliff, I want to go back to something you said about getting back into a normal mental space. Um, what has this, I mean, obviously you guys are at the, the helm of your businesses and you, you're making sure everything goes right for your customers and just for you know your business to stay afloat in general. Um, but what has the, the impact, just like of all the stress of, of maintaining your business, of just existing in, in the middle of a pandemic, what has that impact um, been like for each of you, Alyssa? Uh, yeah, that's been something that I focused on like profusely over this last 2020 year, um, because in June of 2021, that'll just mark the two year mark of the Space MKE being open. And so I'm really new at uh, the entrepreneurial pursuit and um, running a brick and mortar. Now I will say like 2020 has taught me so many lessons. Um, I, I literally like, there's this thing that they say, if you're open uh, three years after you open your business, then you're golden. Um, Cause most startup businesses close within the first three years. And so I literally feel like I got my three years worth of lessons within that 2020 year. Uh, with that being said, <laughs> because um with that being said, because I am a staff of one and I was looking to hire my first employee in 2020 and was unable to because profits literally halted for three months, uh, making sure that my peace of mind is at least a level where I won't bring negative energy to my customers and my clientele um, and have that like not only affect me, but affect my business inevitably has been something that I've been looking to do. So I used to work, you know, seven days a week and now I make sure I'm off every Monday um, is something I've done. I've also scaled down the amounts of services that I was originally offering um, because I found it really hard to juggle like five services with one person. Um, and so, yeah, my, my mental health and then my business health has, has been so intertwined that literally just pausing to take a break and unplugging and not answering emails has become kind of my peace of mind. Yes, I feel you. Self-care all the way. <laughs> G, did you have anything to offer to that question? Um, I really, to be honest with you, I can't say I totally prepared you know, for uh, for the pandemic and shut down for two and a half months. I mean, how can you prepare yeah. for something like that? You know, um, but what I will say is, um, what I will say, because of my because of my extreme positive energy, um, and because of my faith in God and and me paying my tithes, and you know, I didn't honestly, I can honestly say I didn't worry about anything. I never thought about I would have to shut down. Uh, thank God that I have the relationships that I have with uh, the individuals I have them with that has power, you know, over, you know, uh, uh, how G's Clippers run, if you will, like my landlord. You know, I just thank God that, you know, uh, um, that grace was what was given um, and I was able to sustain, you know, and work myself, you know, uh, out of it because two and a half months is a is a, a long time for a, a barbershop of this size to be closed down. So, um, yeah, but I mean, you know, and, and on the flip side, it allowed me to get some things done that I never um, uh, had done. Like I never had a a mission statement and vision statement in writing on the wall in G's Clippers. I did that and it took a while. It might seem like something simple, but that really takes a good, a lot of thinking. Yes, it does. Editing, you know, to, uh, to get that mission statement and vision statement down. Now I have it on a huge... 11 by 24 uh, uh, board so my staff can know what, uh, how G's Clippers, how I want G's Clippers to be perceived to the public. And, and so the public can, can know where we're going. And uh, so that was, that was huge. I was able to get some things done around the shop in terms of painting and sprucing up some things. So it served to be, it served to be some time well needed, if you will. 
Hmm. So like a a blessing and a curse at the same time. Like you hate mm-hmm. to be closed down, but yes. you were able to reevaluate how your business looked. For exactly, everybody. and and yeah. it let me think about um, you know think about uh, the lack of revenue streams that I had. Mm-hmm. You know, because when when that one revenue stream is really going good, you know, it's like you don't really think about you know uh, an, another one and another one and another one. But now, you know, I got three different revenue streams underway right now, which all three. Would be uh will be in um in operation by the end of this year, you know. So I'm excited about you know what's to come. G's uh G's uh masterclass, you know, which I'll be doing. I'll be selling uh, uh that program, which will assist and help individuals that's aspiring barbershop and beauty salon owners or small business uh, business in general, you know, assist with that. It'll be a program they can purchase for that. Uh, I have G's hair product line coming out, which will be um. Uh, eye care hair maintenance. So that will be out by the end of this year. Um, and then I plan to do um, more of the uh, uh, t-shirts and, and things that that, that, that uh, nature. I've invested in a uh, t-shirt press machine. So I need to go ahead and just do more of that. So which I want to, you know, create a revenue stream for my, my kids to, you know, kind of get some uh, entrepreneurial uh, uh, skills under their belt with that t-shirt. Uh, machine. So I'm excited. I'm, I'm very excited about that. So all of that came about, you know, from Kobe. So Kobe was a blessing and a curse, if you will. I I, I don't like to use the word curse, but, uh, right. <laughs> but, but you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. um, before I move on, uh, Cliff, did you have anything to add, um, you know, how your, your mental has been throughout the, the pandemic? Um, I, I think that, um, you know, especially if everyone remembers of those slow months, which was uh, April and May, those are extremely slow kind of lockdown months. I think we had been going so freaking fast. It gave us time to kind of reflect and kind of reset. Um, but I think we all can agree that, um, you know, while the clientele wasn't necessarily there or the hammers weren't flying in our industry, um, we were definitely thinking throughout, you know, I think all of us can agree on that. We were just, our minds were going 100 miles an hour, so like they always do, the months gave us time to kind of slow down, um, which probably gave us clarity on how to revamp and how um, to look at it differently. Like Alyssa mentioned that she, you know, doesn't want to be open on Mondays. She knows she has to give that, you know, that mental rest. So I think we all just kind of grown um, and figured out how to re- kind of reinvent ourselves as um, uh, business owners. Yeah. I just wanted to quickly remind our viewers that you're watching the latest segment of Listen MKE, a partnership between WUWM, Milwaukee's NPR, the Ideas Lab at the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Milwaukee PBS, and the Milwaukee Public Library. My guests are all business owners in the Milwaukee area, and we've been talking about how they've navigated business operations during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, You know, I mentioned in my introduction that minority owned businesses are more likely to fail in normal times, not just during COVID. As black business owners, what are some challenges you've experienced trying to start or maintaining business in Milwaukee? Uh, Cliff, I'd like you to take that one first. Um, I think early on we suffered because of lack of, uh, ac- lack of access to capital. I think that that's true for a lot of businesses. And I think, in, especially in our industry, a, a line of credit is is very essential. Um, not only a line of credit, but the, the proper proper office uh, people or the right people in line to have in your business. I think we earned, learned very early on that uh, hiring or being or having the right people in the right place are very crucial um i think the other the other threats the other to businesses are just understanding the business itself um and i and i'll use construction as an example the best carpenter doesn't mean that you're the best business person so um you have to really make sure that you the people on your team have and can identify but what the market is and uh can be fully functional on um, how to make a profit. And the last point I'll just mention uh, just for f- failing business is only because um, I was the chair of the African-American Chamber of Commerce is um, just the knowledge of with all, you know, sometimes we're not, we're first generation business owners um, and we don't have uh, the business, the business sense um, in a lot of instances to figure out how to navigate through the market or how to be um, innovative 
uh, in order to stay alive past that three or five year mark. And I think that that kind of understanding that um, that hopefully, you know, I can help businesses that are, you know, either smaller or grow bigger than us uh, maintain. But just understanding that those that uh, right, simple stuff, LLC, reconciling every month, having an account and making sure that you have a mentor in the in the arena are very important things in, in order to maintain a business model and not just staring at your bank account thinking that all that money is for you is, is to reinvest. Sorry for the long answer. No, you're fine. You're fine. And I also do want to remind our, our viewers that if you have any questions, um, please uh, fa post them in the Facebook comment section. Uh, G, how about you? You know, Clip didn't, didn't uh, leave much on the bone there. <laughs> I, I, can, I concur. I 100% concur. You know, uh, it's funny. Uh, that's how I... Uh, that's how I came up with the uh, uh, G's masterclass uh, program that I'm about to uh, uh, start uh, uh, marketing uh, because it was like I, I had the whole, you know, the the um, I had the professional acumen in terms of my craft, how well I I um, I was a how good of a barber I was. I feel like I, I was a, a great leader. I feel like I had uh, great uh, client service skills and team building skills, but what I felt that uh, I needed in place, and I didn't really, you know, dawn on me too much until I, I was shut down for that time, that uh, there's no reason why I have um, all these clients coming through the shop and I'm only uh, helping them look good. I'm not really focusing on selling them products. You know, they all, they're all going to use shampoo. Uh, some conditioner, you know, why aren't they getting it from G's Clippers? They, they, you know, they use brushes or combs. Why aren't they getting it from G's Clippers? Uh, uh, it's just so many other things that I've noticed that I was not capitalizing on and taking advantage of during that uh, shutdown time because, you know, and that's one thing, you know, uh, also that I decided to do. I'm about to start working on my exit plan uh, from G's Clippers and come from behind the chair because I believe that G's Clippers can run much more smoother and um, the bottom line I believe would definitely grow if I come from behind the chair and run G's Clippers from in front of the chair so uh, so yeah other than that I mean uh, Clip said it all. Alyssa did you have anything to add? Um, yeah well because I'm so early um, in my journey as an entrepreneur and a business owner, um, startup capital has literally been my one and only focus. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why Black businesses like not only fail quicker, um, but also are harder to get off of the floor as fast. Because I look at all of these other um, success stories, and they're literally raising millions of dollars within a couple of months. Um, for me, I found it hard to raise $10,000 in a couple of months. Um, in addition to that, uh, startup capital is really hard to get from banks. Now, <laughs> I'm only 28, so I'm, I'm fresh out of uh, college. And I do remember going to banks and looking for, you know, loans to get into college. And they're willing to throw those at you. doesn't really matter what your assets are. Yeah. However, when you're looking to get startup capital for a business to start up and you don't have assets to cover it on the back end, they're kind of looking at you like... <laughs> Why would we take this risk? Yeah. And so um, for me, because literally business, you have to pay to play, right? Like if I'm trying to build my business in a six month increment, I'm looking at not only having a team of people, but I need to pay for marketing. I need to pay for everything that's going to go into making the venue um or the lease holding place, what I need it to be to actually have the business run. You know, I'm looking to start um, payroll. So all of these things cost a lot of money to start, which is also why they say businesses usually operate in the black for the first two months, or I'm sorry, in the red for the first two months, uh, or not two months, two years <laughs> um, to get started. Um, like, 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 that's what it is. And so starting a business, it's literally a labor of love, but it's also um, one of those things where you need a lot of money and a lot of belief in yourself to keep going. And when you don't have one, 
the other is harder to to continue to kind of maintain, you know? Um, and so, yeah, for me, startup capital has been one of the hardest things um, to not only raise, but to, you know, seek investors for. And, and Alyssa, it shouldn't be that hard, you know, and 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 that's the that's the gill. I mean, we as uh, as uh, black business owners, we sh there should be an understanding and a direct correlation that I'm sure D can agree with 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 uh, the way our current neighborhoods are, um, lack of opportunity and lack of entrepreneurship. I mean, that's that's a clear dot connection, mm -hmm. and. I, I think people are starting to understand that connection, um, especially with uh, everything that happened this summer. But the the, the path to entrepreneurship, jobs, period. Um, we're the first people to hire our own people, so we're our best we're our best advertisement for helping our own community. I mean, when we look at the people that we hire, uh, we hire ourselves first. So I, it, it's unclear to me to why you know these institutions that will that will loan money to people that aren't qualified but not live in the city, I'm not just trying to say the obvious thing, won't uh, loan it to people that have the ability to employ people to improve the conditions around our neighborhood. And it's, it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating to your point. You can get a school loan, no problem, no credit. <laughs> hey, I need $10,000 to keep this thing open so I can hire somebody so I can grow it. Yeah, no, we don't know who you are. So yeah. it's that, that's amazing. Do you all have, oh, I'm sorry, G, did you want to add something to that? No, no. Oh, okay. Well, I was just going to say, you know, with, with all of that really stacked up against, you know, minority business owners, what, do you have any tips for those who are coming under you or, or even the colleagues who are, you know, in it with you right now? Do you have any tips about how to, how to navigate all of that? G? Well, I think, um, I think that now what uh, this has really woken up so many individuals in terms of how they do business. And um, if they haven't learned anything else, if, if we haven't learned anything else as business owners, we've learned to save our money because you never know uh, what uh, you're going to be faced with. Uh, really look at um, our businesses, um, try our best to look at our businesses through a, a client or customer's perspective or eyes, if you will. Um, to make sure we are providing them with everything we possibly can in terms of uh, whatever their needs are, whatever we can. We got to start being as innovative as we can with, uh, with thinking of different ways that uh, we can generate money. You know, um, one thing I've done just recently, I realized how many impressions or people to come through G's Clippers. And I'm like, you know, um, I can... I, you know, maximize on that, you know, um, by charging companies, you know, um, uh, advertisement space in G's Clippers. And when I put something out there, it was unbelievable at how many companies responded to that. So it's just a matter of just being innovative and and, and really, you know, just watching everything you got going out and, and what you got coming in and, 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 and continue being innovative, innovative, innovative thinking, you know, think take. Uh, think tank, do some, uh, you know, some group sessions with, you know, some close friends of yours and and kind of be transparent and let them know what you're doing and, and where you're trying to go and see what kind of feedback you get, because it definitely worked with me because I'm only one person, you know, and I own G's Clippers by myself. And so I for the first time in, in I don't know how many years, I literally had a, a, a think session, if you will, with a few individuals. It was four of us. And we and when I tell you a few of the things I've implemented, I got from that uh, that session. So the word of the day is innovative. <laughs> innovative. innovative. <laughs> so what's been the most difficult thing about the pandemic when it comes to business? And has there been any good? Alyssa? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the most difficult thing literally was me kind of I guess figuring out if I really had the gusto to be an entrepreneur, right? Like profits halted. <laughs> like I'm talking about went to zero um, for three entire months for me. And um, 
And I mean, the bills didn't go anywhere <laughs> um, for not only my overhead at my business, but for my life, you know, to simply like exist on this planet. Um, and so like the most difficult thing for me was like, wait, like, did I make a mistake? You know what I'm saying? Like I, um, I understood that being an entrepreneur and a business owner is the hard, the hard journey. You know, the easy journey would just be to go get a safe job, um, that has like health insurance already lined up in it and et cetera, et cetera, your right. days off. Um, but like, did I, did I really want to do this? I think that kind of like existential crisis was <laughs> one of the most difficult portions of the year. Um, but of, of course, on the flip side of that, there's clarity, right? Like I realized that this absolutely is what I wanted to do. Like this absolutely was my purpose, um, that I absolutely was going to uh, try my damnedest to break through these glass ceilings for people that look like me coming up after me um, and to make it easier for them. And so, uh, so yeah, there was this beautiful kind of, I guess, yin and yang situation where I was like, wait, what am I doing with my life right now? And then it was like, the right thing. <laughs> Keep going, you know. I definitely feel that question and like, am am I right for this? Right. Um, because you you keep hitting, you know, so many roadblocks and it's like you gotta reevaluate sometimes. But at least you like you said, you got the clarity. Uh Cliff, how about you? What's been difficult? What's been good? I think the difficult is just staying focused. Um and uh for me uh it was trying to trying to forecast when all this was going to get better. Um, right. That was like the most difficult, you know, like once they started, uh, you know, once they canceled Summerfest, I was like, Oh man, I'm turning 40 this year. I guess I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then it just kept going and going and getting it pushed. So it was me just kind of trying to look over the horizon to see when, when this was going to start slowing down. Um, that was the most difficult portion um, because you can't really forecast, um, you know, it, I mean, to me, it was also, I mean, this is just in my follow up phone calls like, hey, you know, you said call you back in April. <laughs> you're like, you're like, oh, we don't know. You know, we don't have anyone in our office right now. Like, that was the most difficult portion of trying to just follow up with the projects that we like just had on our backlog sheet. Um, and I think the for the for me, the easiest thing jumping back in the groove once jobs start picking back up right you almost felt um almost felt bad about it right um because there are so many businesses that i know that just didn't survive the pandemic so you know i had a job to kind of promote my job is to kind of make sure that we're promoting the jobs that are out there and you know with every post i felt kind of bad about uh you know other people that did you know current other entrepreneurs business owners that um, weren't able to survive the pandemic so you know but you know the easiest thing was to get back in the groove with uh you know the work that's out here um to make sure that there that we had a presence out there so g anything you want to add well i mean um the hardest part was the whole shutdown itself with no income coming in whatsoever uh, and, you know, uh, trying to keep my staff motivated, you know, I, got, I would, uh, you know, we have a group, uh, a group chat on WhatsApp, you know, and, and we all communicate through that. And whenever I see a, a barber or a stylist not really chime in as much, you know, I call them individually. So I know, I know a lot of them was like, you know, I wonder what G is going to come up with uh, to motivate us, with, <laughs> motivate us today. Because it was tough. I'm going to be honest with you. I had to dig deep sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I had to dig deep to motivate them. And so that was, that was tough. But, um, you know, the, um, the blessing, you know, uh, um, was just that we're, we're back, you know, and, and all what I have been able to do um, through G's Clippers in terms of, like I said, the mission statement, vision statement, the uh, things that I've implemented and, and about to implement within G's Clippers. Um, all that was a blessing. All that was because of COVID. So COVID, like I said, was a blessing in disguise as well, you know, so, yeah. Was there anything, or what do you think could have been done uh, better from a city, state, or federal level to assist businesses um, going through the, the pandemic? 
Me? G, yes. Okay. I was, I was giving I, everybody a second to, to think. I would, <laughs> I would say for me right out the gate, I mean, what I feel was definitely could have uh, been better. Uh, it took me a while to get some relief because the PPP um, uh, was basically payroll protection plan, if you will. So I didn't have any payroll. I didn't have any. And the majority of my shop is booth rent, you know, so there was nothing. And even when I got relief, I still didn't get any real relief. So that was tough. I'm going to be honest with you. So I think that uh, what, the, what the state could have done was to implement something for uh contract workers you know where uh businesses that rely on on contractors paying them if you will um because they didn't for i mean for some time and even when they did it just had there was no comparison to what the uh payroll protection uh provided uh, in terms of relief hmm. Alyssa, how about you yeah, agreed. Um, I also didn't qualify for most of the relief loans um, because I don't have payroll. Um, and because of the amount of time that I've been in business and because of the amount of money that I make annually, um, I did not qualify for the, a lot of the relief loans. Um, and so relief loans like that would be targeted towards um, A, like like uh, G was saying, the contractors, um, B, businesses that have been in uh, in business for a short amount of time and aren't necessarily making that much money um, per annual year would have been great. Um, it seems like the relief loans definitely were targeted towards more so relieving the employees as opposed to relieving the businesses that were literally halted in profits for months. Cliff? Yeah, my mine would be uh, that um, they should have been a little bit more proactive with a lot of these minority businesses. I mean, they're, they're, the government's mind was on greed, right? How do we keep people, I'm not going to say greed, but how do we keep people going, right? That was their thought process. How can we pay people to keep going? And what they never look at and what they neglect to look at is the statistics and types of small businesses that black and African-Americans own. And, and it hurt a lot of African-American businesses. Like we we are always the last to recover from every every recession, every slip in a dollar. Blacks are always, we're the first to fire. <laughs> we're the last person on the construction site. Even the construction, we're the last person on the construction site, first one to get a let go. And I feel like that's what they did with this relief uh, package. I forgot about it. Uh, the, the shops and the black entrepreneurs and business owners here. And I think that that was a total failure in their part. Hmm. So basically, you know, if we already know that how minority owned businesses fare in the world, we should take that into consideration with this relief and, and also expand the qualifications for these, for these loans. And is that basically what we're all saying here? Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Got you. Got you. So, I, my final question, I guess, is have you implemented any changes that you plan to keep once the virus is no longer a concern? Um, Alyssa, I'll throw it back to you. Yeah, so all of my sanitation um, practices right now, I absolutely plan on keeping. Um, honestly, I feel like Corona has exposed just how disgusting we were living before. Like, I agree. I, I've seen these videos and it's just like, wait, how were we, like, why were we this close to people beforehand? Yeah. Like, why did we not do regular sanitation of these high traffic areas? Yeah. And so, yeah, the sanitation practices I'll absolutely be keeping. Um, I'll also be keeping my one day off a week just for my peace of mind like yes. it literally boosts my, <laughs> my morale um with my entire business um and the business model that i've revised uh to be what it is and to be able to be profitable um during the last part of 2020 into 2021 like i'm proud to say that we've been profitable for now the last six months um consecutively um and so because i was able to revise my business model i now have something that's a lot more streamlined um and a lot more profitable overall, um, even under this current condition of still like having capacity limits and um, and the six feet distance uh, from each other. So 
or the social distancing. Um, so there are a couple of good things that came from it. My sanitation practices, <laughs> my revised business model, and just considering myself a lot more. Okay. Cliff, how about you? No, yeah. I mean, echo, definitely the sanitation processes. Uh, I think we talked about that earlier. Or, you know, you're looking around at, at videos from last year like, ew. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and managing forecasts, just an expectation. Uh, managing forecasts, managing customers, just an expectation of some if something can happen like this again. Andy? <laughs> Alyssa said it, uh, and 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 Cliff uh, echoed, and I'm about to echo again. You know, well, in my business, we, you know, we already have to uh, uh, practice uh, safety and sanitation. But you know, of course, I know we all kind of get you know loose with it sometimes. This just basically, you know, made us all as as barbers and stylists pay that much more attention to um, how uh, sanitary we are. So definitely going to just stay on top of that um, because, you know, in our business, you know, those clients are now, you know, they're they're very informed and watching the news and things of that nature and, you know, really on top of it more so now than they've ever been in their life, I'm sure. So we have to be mindful that, that uh, as they're looking at us, we got to make sure we are on top of our game. So definitely to keep um, keep going with that. I mean, as far as the the uh the crowds in the barbershop i mean i, I welcome that bring it on you know so i mean <laughs> so i can't say we're going to be practicing six feet you know uh but uh you know i think i think naturally a lot of people just will be mindful in, t in terms of how how close they are to individuals and and all but i'm just excited for things to get somewhat back to normal i know cliff is not you know, optimistic. You know, in terms of things getting back to normal, but uh, I'm 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 optimistic. You know that we will get uh, as close back to normal as we possibly uh, can. Yes, I agree, and and looking forward to it. Let's all forget 2020 ever existed. Um, but no, we we learned a lot, um, and now all we can do is just apply that and hopefully be better for the future. So, um, as I uh, wrap this up, are there any final thoughts that um, any of you would like to share? Just that I, I, pray, to, I pray to everybody, you know, uh, um, succeed in business, you know, um, took some great greatness, uh, great ideas from um, the COVID shutdown and, um, and come out stronger and better than ever. I echo that. Alyssa, it's on you. Yeah. Golden words. <laughs> um, I would just say believe in yourself. Like at the end of the day, if you believe in yourself, then that belief will just be amplified by others around you. And so I think the easy way out oftentimes is to kind of doubt yourself and to doubt your goals and to doubt what you're doing. And and like doubt becomes then replicated by everyone else around you. But if literally you believe in yourself, then you'll start to have people believe in you and that will be amplified, which oftentimes, especially in business, that translates to dollars, which is the name of the game. Right. Go right. ahead, Alyssa. That was a great way to end it, yes. Alyssa, Alyssa, needs, to, Alyssa needs to be a, a startup business coach. She got the word. I, 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 I just listen, might, okay, I, I'm, I'm looking really for good. extra income streams. <laughs> Write it down. You're, point. you're really on point. You know, when you've been in business for so long, you kind of, you know, forget about some of these practices that really helped us get to mm. that next level and your softness of your voice. You just got it. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> get it. I appreciate you. <laughs> Y'all are funny. Well, G, Cliff, Alyssa, thank you guys so much for joining me for this conversation today. I think it went, I think it went very well. <laughs> Nobody saw that. Uh, but yes, uh, thank you guys so much, all of you for watching. This has been Listen MKE, a partnership between WUWM Milwaukee's NPR, the Milwaukee Public Library, the Ideas Lab at the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, and Milwaukee PBS. My name's Taryn. I'm the race and ethnicity reporter at WUWM. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>